Laudato Jesus Christus. Praised be Jesus Christ. A very warm welcome to this live broadcast from St. Peter's Basilica in Rome for the Chrism Mass, which will be presided over by Pope Francis. On behalf of Vatican Media, I would like to welcome you to this broadcast. Some of you may be joining us through various channels associated with Vatican Media, such as the Vatican Audio Live Events app, the Radio Vaticana app, the Vatican News website, or the Vatican News English YouTube channel or Facebook Live feed. To all of you joining us through Catholic TV, Catholic Faith Network, Shalom World Television Networks USA, Radio Maria England, EWTN TV, Shalom TV India, Uganda Catholic Television, Salt and Light TV, Sunday Shalom, Atmodashan TV, Luminous Radio, as well as all radio stations and internet sites throughout the world, a very warm welcome to you all. My name is Ben Sinclair, and it is a pleasure to provide you with the English language commentary for today's Chrism Mass. And this morning, I am pleased to be joined by Ludwig Harreider. Good morning, Ludwig. Good morning, Ben. Today, the Pope will preside over the Chrism Mass, which is a Mass that the Bishop can celebrate with his presbyterate. This liturgy aims to manifest the communion which exists between the Bishop and his priests. So we can see that there are many priests and bishops who are present in the Diocese of Rome, who are concelebrating the Chrismas this morning, and joined by the Bishop of Rome, Pope Francis. And I'd also like to give a very warm welcome to all of the viewers watching through channels associated through worldwide telecast this morning. And during this Mass there will be three oils which will be consecrated for use in the Diocese of Rome for the sacraments throughout the next year. We will firstly see the oil of the sick consecrated. This is pure olive oil and will be used for the sacrament of the anointing of the sick. The second oil to be consecrated will be the oil of catechumens. This is the oil which will consecrate adults and infants prior to baptism. And the third and final oil which will be consecrated during the Mass is the sacred chrism oil. This is oil which is mixed with balsam and used during the baptismal rite. And in addition, as the chrism oil is a sign of consecration, it is not only used during the rite of baptism, but also used for the ordination of priests and bishops. Each year, the local bishop blesses enough new oils for every parish during the Christmas. The holy oils are then transported to individual parishes, where they are available for use during that year. Though the bishop cannot be physically present at every baptism or confirmation in his diocese, he can be symbolically present through the oils which he has blessed. And a few moments ago we saw the arrival of Pope Francis onto the sanctuary in the Basilica this morning. And we're seeing now the entrance procession, the servers carrying the thurible as well as the crucifix, processional cross and candles, leading the bishops and cardinals up to the sanctuary for the Chrism Mass. And we hear the Scola singing the the introit, the opening antiphon, which is taken from the first chapter of the Book of the Apocalypse. You have made us a kingdom, priests for our God. And in between that antiphon, we, the Scola, are singing from Psalm 131. as well as the consecration of the three oils to be 
used throughout the Diocese of Rome for the next year. The priests are gathered with people from the Diocese of Rome as well as many pilgrims in Rome for this sacred Paschal Trigium and the Easter season. And during the Mass the priests and bishops will be renewing their promises of their priestly ordination which they made on the day of their ordination and continue to make every year for the during the chrism mass The book of the Gospels has been placed on the altar and in a few moments time we will begin the start of the Mass with the sign of the cross and the greeting by the Holy Father. We're now seeing Cardinal Angelo di Donatis, who is the Cardinal Vicar of Rome, incensing the altar. Whilst the scholar continue to sing the introductory antiphon. Padre del Figlio dello Spirito Santo. Amen. La pace sia con voi. E Fratelli e sorelle, per celebrare degnamente i santi misteri, riconosciamo i nostri peccati.
Signore, la tua misericordia. Dio onnipotente, abbia misericordia di noi. Perdoni i nostri peccati e ci conduca alla vita eterna. Amen. We sing now the Kyrie. Gloria.
Preghiamo. O Padre, che hai consacrato al tuo innocente figlio con l'unzione dello Spirito Santo e lo hai costituito Messia e Signore, concedi a noi, resi partecipi della sua consacrazione, di essere testimoni nel mondo della sua opera di salvezza. Per il nostro Signore Gesù Cristo, tuo Figlio che Dio, e vive regna con te nell'unità dello Spirito Santo per tutti i secoli dei secoli. O oh God, who anointed your only begotten Son with the Holy Spirit and made him Christ and Lord, graciously grant that, being made sharers in his consecration, we may bear witness to your redemption in the world. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. And the first reading is being proclaimed from the prophet Isaiah. Mi ha mandato a portare il lieto annuncio ai miseri. The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor, to bind up hearts that are broken, to proclaim liberty to captives and freedom to those in prison, to proclaim a year of favor from the Lord, a day of vengeance for our God, to comfort all those who mourn and to give them for ashes a garland, for mourning robe, the oil of gladness, for dependency, praise. But you, you will be named priests of the Lord. They will call you ministers of our God. I reward them faithfully and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their race will be famous throughout the nations, the descendants throughout the peoples. All who see them will admit that they are a race whom the Lord has blessed. Parola di Dio Prendiamo grazie a te And the response to the psalm is I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. Canterò per sempre l'amore del Signore. Canterò per sempre l'amore del Signore. Ho trovato Davide mio servo. Con il mio santo olio l'ho consacrato. I have found David my servant, and with my holy oil anointed him. My hand shall always be with him, and my arm shall make him strong. Fedeltà e il mio amore saranno con lui, e nel mio nome si innalzerà la sua fonte. My truth and my love shall be with him. By my name his might shall be exalted. He will say to me, You are my Father, my God, the rock who saves me. And the second reading is from the first chapter of the book of the Apocalypse, verses 5 to 8. Dal libro dell'Apocalisse di San Giovanni Apostolo. Grazie a voi e pace da Gesù Cristo, il testimone fedele, il primogenito dei morti e il sovrano dei re della terra. Grace and peace to you from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, 
the ruler of the kings of the earth. He loves us and has washed away our sins with his blood and made us a line of kings, priests to serve his God and Father. To him then be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. It is he who is coming on the clouds. Everyone will see him, even those who pierced him and all the races of the earth will mourn over him. This is the truth. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. And the congregation and everyone present stands to greet the gospel. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. And the verse which the scholar will continue to sing will be from the 61st chapter of the book of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me. He has sent me to bring the good news to the poor. Today's Gospel will be taken from the fourth chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, verses 16 to 21. Il Signore sia con voi. Dal Vangelo secondo Luca. In quel tempo Gesù venne a Nazareth dove era cresciuto e secondo il suo solito di sabato 
entrò nella sinagoga e si alzò a leggere. Gli fu dato il rotolo del profeta Isaia. Aprì il rotolo e trovò il passo dove era scritto Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as he usually did. He stood up to read, and they handed him the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Unrolling the scroll, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for he has anointed me. He has sent me to bring the good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives, and to the blind new sight, to set the downtrodden free, to proclaim the Lord's year in a favour. He then rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the assistant, and sat down, and all eyes in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to speak to them. This text is being fulfilled today even as you listen. Parola del Signore And after hearing the words of Scripture, we come to listen to the Holy Father's homily. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Jesus begins his preaching with this verse, which also begins today's first reading. At the beginning, then, the Spirit of the Lord is present and it's I, today I would like to reflect with you on the Holy Spirit dear brothers in the priesthood for without the Spirit of the Lord there can be no Christian life without his anointing there can be no holiness he is at the center and it is fitting that today on the birthday of the priesthood we acknowledge his presence at the origin of our own ministry and the life and vitality of every priest. Holy Mother Church teaches us to profess that the Holy Spirit is the giver of life. Jesus told us it is the Spirit that gives life. His teaching was taken up by the Apostle Paul, who wrote that the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life, and who spoke of the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Without the Holy Spirit, the Church would not be the living bride of Christ, but at most, a religious association. Good, good or bad, but just a religious association. Not the body of Christ, but a temple built by human hands. How then are we to build up the Church, if not beginning with the fact that we are temples of the Holy Spirit, who dwells in us? We cannot lock the Spirit out of the house or park him in some devotional zone, but he needs to be in the center. We need to say every day, come, for without your strength we are lost. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Every one of us can say this, not out of presumption, but as a reality. For all Christians, and priests in particular, can apply to themselves the words that follow. Because the Lord has anointed me, dear brothers, apart from any merit of our own, and by sheer grace, we have received an anointing that has made us fathers and shepherds among the holy people of God. 
Let us reflect then on this aspect of the Spirit, His anointing. After His initial anointing, which took place in the womb of Mary, the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus in the Jordan. Following that, as St. Basil explains, every act of Christ was performed with the co-presence of the Holy Spirit. In the power of the latter anointing, Jesus preached and worked signs. Thanks to that anointing, power came out from him and healed all. Jesus and the Spirit always work together, as if they were two hands of the Father that reach out to embrace us and to raise us up. By those hands, our own hands were sealed, anointed by the Spirit of Christ. Yes, my brothers, the Lord has not only chosen us and called us, He has poured out upon us the, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the same Spirit who, descend, who descended upon the Apostles. My brothers, we are the ones who have been anointed. Let us turn our attention to them then, the Apostles. Jesus chose them and at his call they left their boats, their nets and their homes. The anointing of the words changed their lives. With great enthusiasm they followed the Master and began to preach, convinced that they would go on to accomplish even greater things. Then came the Passover. Everything seemed to come to a halt. They even denied and abandoned their Master. Don't, don't be afraid. We must be courageous in our own lives, in our own failings. They denied and abandoned their master. Peter was the first. They came to grips with their own failure. They realized that they had not understood him. The words uttered by Peter in the courtyard of the high priest following the Last Supper, I do not know this man, were not only an impulsive attempt at self-defense, but an admission of spiritual ignorance. He and the others, perhaps, expected a life of triumph behind the Messiah, who drew crowds and worked wonders, but they failed to understand the scandal of the cross which caused their certainties to collapse. Jesus knew that, on their own, they would not have succeeded, and so he promised to send them the paraclete. And it was precisely that second anointing at Pentecost that changed the disciples and led them to shepherd no longer themselves, but the Lord's flock. This is the contradiction to resolve. They've got to, are we going to be a, a shepherd of God's people or of myself? And it's the Spirit who leads us on that road. It was that anointing with fire that extinguished a piety focused on themselves and their own abilities. After receiving the Spirit, Peter's fear and wavering dissipated. James and John, with a burning desire to give their lives, no longer sought places of honor. And the others who had huddled fearfully in the upper room went forth into the world as apostles. And the Spirit changes our, our hearts. It makes us different people. Dear brothers, something similar happens in our own priestly and apostolic lives. We too experience an initial anointing, which began with a loving call that captivated our hearts and set out on a journey. And the power of the Holy Spirit descended upon our genuine enthusiasm and consecrated us. And later, in God's good time, each of us experienced a Passover, representing a moment of truth. At a time of crisis, which took various forms, and it happens to all of us. Sooner or later, we all experience disappointment, frustration and our own weakness. Our ide ideals seem to recede in the face of reality. A certain force of habit takes over, and difficulties that once seemed un unimaginable appear to challenge this fi fidelity.
this stage, this t these temptations which all of us face, and they, we've had them and we will have them, this stage is a watershed for us. We can emerge from it badly, drifting towards mediocrity and settling for a dreary routine in which three dangerous temptations can arise. The temptation of compromise, where we are content just to do what has to be done. The temptation of surrogates, where we find satisfaction, we look not to our anointing, but elsewhere. And the temptation of discouragement, the most common one, where dissatisfaction leads to inertia. This is the great danger, while outward appearances remain intact, I'm a priest, I'm a priest, we close in upon ourselves and are content just to get by. The fragrance of our anointing no longer wafts through our lives, our hearts no longer expand, but shrivel, disillusioned and disenchanted. And when a priest, when, when the priesthood slowly dissipates upon clericalism, and the priest forgets that he's a shepherd of the people. But this crisis also has the potential to be a turning point in our priesthood, the decisive stage of the spiritual life, in which the ultimate choice has to be made between Jesus and the world, between heroic charity and mediocrity, between the cross and comfort, between holiness and dutiful fidelity to our religious obligations. At the end of this celebration, there's a, a book which speaks about this, this problem. The second, the second call. It's a book which touches on this problem. And we, we all need to reflect on this moment of our priesthood. And it is a grace-filled moment when, like the disciples at Easter, we are called to be sufficiently humble to admit that we have been won over by the suffering and crucified Christ and to set out on a new journey, that new journey of the Spirit, of faith and a love that is strong, yet without illusions. It is the Kairos that enables us to realize that it's not enough to abandon boat and nets in order to follow Jesus for a certain time, but it also demands going to Calvary, learning its lesson and receiving its fruit, and persevering with the help of the Holy Spirit to the end of a life, me to the end of a life meant to conclude in the perfection of divine charity. With the help of the Holy Spirit, for us, as for the Apostles, it's time of a second anointing. It's the time of a second calling that we hear that leads to the second anointing, in which the Spirit is poured out no longer on the enthusiasm of our hopes and dreams, but on the freedom of our concrete situation. Anointing that it's an anointing that penetrates the depths of our reality, where the Spirit anoints our weaknesses, our weariness, our inner poverty. An anointing that brings a new fragrance, that of the Spirit, not of ourselves. And in this moment, I'm having a memory, keeping those in memory, those who are in crisis. Those who are disorientated and who don't know how how to take how to take this 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 this, this road of the second anointing, the second anointing of the spirit, and these brothers who are present, 
simply, I, I simply tell them, have courage. The Lord is greater than our weaknesses of your sins. And have faith in the Lord. He's calling you for the second time. That, that way of the anointing with the Holy Spirit. As double life doesn't, will never help you. Tip, throw it all out the window. Look, look ahead. Let yourself be caressed by the Holy Spirit. This happens when we admit the reality of our own weakness. That is what the Spirit of Truth tells us to do. He prompts us to look deep within and to ask, does my fulfillment depend on my abilities, my position, the compliments I receive, my promotions, the respect of my superiors or co-workers, the comforts with which I surround myself, or rather, does it depend on the anointing that spreads its fragrance everywhere in my life? Dear brothers, priestly maturity comes from the Holy Spirit and it's achieved when he becomes the protagonist in our lives. Once that happens, everything turns around, even disappointments and bitter experiences and sins, since we are not lo no longer trying to find happiness by adjusting details, but gi by giving ourselves completely to the Lord, who anointed us, and who wants us to that anointing to penetrate the depths of our being. Brothers, we rediscover that the spiritual life becomes liberating and joyful once we are no longer concerned to save appearances and make quick fixes. But when we leave the initiative to the Spirit and in openness to His plans, we show our willingness to serve wherever and however we are asked. Our priesthood does not grow by quick fixes but by an overflow of grace. If we allow the Spirit of Truth to act within us, we will preserve His anointing. We will we'll preserve it, because the various untruths, the, hypocr the hypocrisies with which we are tempted to live, will come to light immediately, and the Spirit who cleanses what is unclean will tirelessly suggest to us not to defile our anointing, even in the least. We think of that phrase of the preacher who says that dying flies spoil the sweetness of the ointment. It's true. Every form of duplicity, the, the clerical duplicity that insinuates itself is dangerous. It must not be tolerated, but brought into the light of the Spirit, for the heart is devious above all else. It is perverse and difficult to heal. The Holy Spirit, He alone, heals our infidelities. And for us, this is an unavoidable struggle. It is indispensable, as St. Gregory the Great wrote, that those who proclaim the word of God must first be concerned with their own way of life, and then, based on his own life, he can learn what to say and how to say it. Let no one presume to say more than what he first he heard within. The Spirit is that interior teacher to whom we must listen recognizing that he desires to anoint every part of us. Brothers, let us preserve our anointing, invoking the Spirit not as an occasional act of piety, but as the breath every day. Come, come Holy Spirit. Consecrated by him, I am called to immerse myself in him, to make his life penetrate my darkness. We have lots of darknesses, so that I can rediscover the truth of who I am and what I am. Let us allow ourselves to be impelled by him to combat the untruths that struggle within us. And let us allow ourselves to be reborn from him who, from him through adoration. For when we adore the Lord, he pours forth into our hearts his spirit. Lo Spirito del Signore è su di me.
The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me, he has sent me. So the prophecy continues to bring good news, liberty, healing and grace. In a word, to bring harmony wherever it is lacking. Because as St. Basil says, the Holy Spirit is harmony. It's him that makes harmony. After speaking to you about anointing, I would like to say something to you about the harmony that is its consequence. The Holy Spirit is harmony. Above all in heaven, St. Basil notes that all super-celestial and unspeakable harmony in the service of God and in the mutual symphony of the supercosmic powers would be impossible to preserve if not for the authority of the Spirit. As well as on earth, in the Church, the Spirit is that divine and musical harmony that binds everything together. Think of a presbytery without harmony, without, without the Spirit, it doesn't work. He awakens the diversity of charisms and brings them into unity. He creates concord that's not based on uniformity, but on the creativity of charity. In this way, he creates harmony from multiplicity. At the time of the Second Vatican Council, itself a gift of the Spirit, a theologian published a study in which he spoke of the Spirit not as an individual, but as a plural. He suggested thinking of the Spirit as a divine person who is not only singular but plural, as the we of God, the we of the Father and of the Son, since he is their bond. The Holy Spirit is in himself concord, communion and harmony. And I remember when I read this theological book, I was scandalized. It seemed like it was a heresy because in our formation it doesn't, it doesn't appear right. To create harmony is what the Spirit desires, above all, through those whom he has appointed, through whom he has poured out his anointing. Brothers, building harmony among ourselves is not simply a good way of improving the functioning of an ecclesiastical structures or a matter of strategy or politeness. It is an intrinsic demand of the life of the Spirit. We sin against the Spirit who is communion. Whenever we become, even unintentionally, instruments of division, gossipers, it's simply the same. When we're instruments of division, we're against the Spirit. And whenever we play the game of the enemy, who never comes out in the, into the open, who loves gossip and insinuation, forms parties and cliques, fuels nostalgia for times past, distru 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 distrust, pessimism and fear, let's take care, please, not to defile the anointing of the Holy Spirit and the robe of Holy Mother Church with disunity, with polarization, or a lack of charity and communion. Let us remember that the Spirit, as the we of God, prefer, prefers the shape of community, which is the willingness with regards to one's own needs, obedience with regards to one's own tastes, humility with regards to one's own claims. Harmony is not one virtue among others, it is something more. As St. Gregory the Great writes, the worth of the virtue of concord is shown by the fact that without it, the other virtues have no value whatsoever. Let us help one another, brothers, to preserve harmony. To preserve harmony. This is our task, starting not from others, 
but for each of us from himself. Let us ask ourselves, in my words, in my comments, in what I say and write, is there the seal of the Spirit or that of the world? Do I think about the kindness of the priest? In the priests, priesthood sometimes this doesn't happen. If people see in us too, people who are dis dissatisfied and discontented, who criticize and point fingers, where else will they find harmony? How many people fail to approach us or keep, keep at a distance because in the church they feel unwelcomed, unloved, regarded with suspicion and judged? In God's name, let us be welcoming and forgiving always. And let us remember that being irritable and full of complaints does not produce good fruits, but spoils our preaching, since it is a counter witness to God, who is communion in harmony. Above all, it displeases the Holy Spirit, whom the Apostle Paul urges us not to grieve. Dear brothers, I leave you with these thoughts that are dear to my heart. And I conclude with two simple and important words. Thank you. Thank you for your witness. Thank you for your service. Thank you for the hidden good you do and for the forgiveness and consolation that you bestow in God's name. Always be forgiving, please. Never deny um, pardon. Thank you for your ministry, which is often carried out with great effort and little recognition. Brothers, may the Spirit of God, who does not disappoint those who trust in him, fill you with peace and bring to conclusion the good work he began in you so that you may be prophetic witnesses of his anointing and apostles of harmony. And after listening to the Holy Father's words on this text of, of the, the Chrism Mass, his homily, during which he cited a book by Father René Foyomi, and reflecting on the nature of the priesthood. All of the priests present in St. Peter's Basilica this morning will now come to renew their priestly promises which they made on the day of their ordination and which they do at this Mass every year. The Holy Father in his homily reflecting on the two anointings their first at their priestly ordination, and secondly, the anointing which they receive daily in their lives by the Holy Spirit. Beloved sons, on the anniversary of that day when Christ our Lord conferred his priesthood on his apostles and on us, are you resolved to renew in the presence of your bishop and God's holy people 
the promises you once made? And the priest responds, I am. Are you resolved to be more united with the Lord Jesus and more closely conformed to him, denying yourselves and confirming those promises about sacred duties towards Christ's church, which prompted by love of him, you willingly and joyfully pledged on the day of your priestly ordination? Are you resolved to be faithful stewards of the mysteries of God in the Holy Eucharist and the other liturgical rites, and to discharge faithfully the sacred office of teaching, following Christ the Head and Shepherd, not seeking any gain, but only zeal for souls? As for you, dearest sons and daughters, pray for your priests, that the Lord may pour out his gifts abundantly upon them, and keep them faithful as ministers of Christ the High Priest, so that they may lead you to him, who is the source of salvation. And pray also for me, that I may be faithful to the apostolic office entrusted to me in my lowliness, and that in your midst I may be made day by day a living and more perfect image of Christ the Priest, the Good Shepherd, the Teacher, and the Servant of all. May the Lord keep us all in his charity and lead all of us, shepherds and flock, to eternal life. Amen. renewing their priestly promises. The liturgy of the blessings of the three oils will now begin. There will be three oils which will be blessed. Firstly, the oil of the sick. Secondly, the oil of catechumens. And thirdly, the sacred chrism oil, which will be brought up one by one. And the Holy Father will bestow his blessing upon it. And during this procession, we're hearing the scholar singing, O Redeemer, he'll hear the anthem which your people gathered sing. And we see the first of the oils, the followed by the second and then the third, which are now being brought up towards the main altar.
and the four deacons have just brought the first of the oils to be blessed, that is the oil of the sick, towards the Holy Father. And at the conclusion of the chant, he will bless the first of these oils. The oil of the sick. Thanks be to God. Dio Padre di ogni consolazione che per me è il tuo figlio hai voluto raccogliere. O God, Father of all consolation, who through your Son have willed to heal the infirmities of the sick, listen favorably to this prayer of faith. Send down from heaven, we pray, your Holy Spirit, the Paraclete, upon the rich substance of this oil, which you were pleased to bring forth from vigorous green trees to restore our bodies, so that by your holy blessing, by your holy blessing, this oil may be for anyone who is anointed with it a safeguard for body, mind and spirit, to take away every pain, every infirmity and every sickness. May it become your holy oil, O Lord, blessed by you for our use in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. After the blessing of the first oil, the oil of the sick, the deacons now bring the second of the three oils, the oil of catechumens, towards the Holy Father, where he will once again bless this oil for use throughout the Diocese of Rome. The oil of catechumens, thanks be to God. O God, strength and protection of your people, who have placed in the oil your, who have placed in the oil you have created a sign of endurance, graciously bless this oil. Grant fortitude to all catechumens who are anointed with it, that receiving your divine wisdom and strength, they may understand more deeply the gospel of Christ, may undertake generously the labors of Christian life, and, made worthy to adoption of sonship, may find joy in being born again and living in your church. Through Christ our Lord. And the third and final oil to be blessed, the sacred chrism oil, is now approaching the Holy Father. And this chrism oil, the most sacred of the three oils, will be mixed with a perfume which one of the deacons is carrying. And it is to be used in baptism for anointing that takes after the baptism and confirmation and during priestly and episcopal ordinations. Olium ad sanctum chrisma. The oil for the holy chrism. Thanks be to God.
and now the perfume is poured into the oil that is going to be blessed soon by the Holy Father. Let us pray there, brethren, to God the Father Almighty, that he may bless and sanctify this fragrant oil, and may those outwardly signed with it be inwardly anointed and made worthy of divine redemption. And now the Holy Father breathed over the oil. O God, author of every increase and of all spiritual growth, graciously accept the joyful homage of thanksgiving which the Church renders you through our voice. For in the beginning you commanded the earth to produce fruit-bearing plants, and among them the olive tree, to bring forth the great richness of this oil, that its fruit might serve for the making of sacred chrism. David too, foreseeing by the spirit of prophecy the sacraments of your grace, sang of oil, making our faces radiant with joy. And when the former days of the world's sins were washed away in the great flood, the dove showing forth by an olive branch a figure of the gift to come, announced that peace had been restored to the earth. In these latter times, all this has been manifestly fulfilled, for when all sinful deeds are washed away in the waters of baptism, an anointing with this oil makes our face joyful and serene. Moreover, to your servant Moses you gave the command that he make his brother Aaron, washed first with water, a priest by the pouring of this oil. To this there came still greater dignity when your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, insisted on being washed by John in Jordan's waters. For as your Holy Spirit, in the likeness of a dove, was sent upon him from on high, your voice then followed and declared him to be your only begotten Son, well pleasing to you. And you were seen clearly to affirm him, just as your prophet David had foretold, as the one anointed with the oil of gladness above his companions. To you, therefore, O Lord, we pray that your blessing, that by your blessing you may graciously sanctify the rich substance of this oil you have created and permeate it with the strength of the Holy Spirit by means too of the power at work in your Christ, from whose your holy name is named the Chrism, with which you have anointed your priests and kings, prophets and martyrs, for those to be reborn through the spiritual bath of baptism Make the chrism you have created a holy sign of the fullness of life and salvi salvation, that through the sanctification imparted by the anointing and with corruption of the first birth now cleansed, they may be made a temple of your majesty and give forth the fragrance of an innocence of life pleasing to you. By the nature of the sacrament you have established, may they be endowed with the dignity of king, priest and prophet, and clothed with the garment of that incorruption which is your gift. And may this oil 
become the chrism of salvation for those who will be born again of water and the Holy Spirit, and make them partakers of eternal life, sharers of heavenly glory, through Christ our Lord. Three oils have now been placed at the foot of the altar, which where they, where they will remain until the end of this celebration of Holy Mass. At the conclusion of the blessing of the three oils, the liturgy of the Eucharist will now begin, during which the scholar sing a piece from Psalm 80. Ring out your joy to God our strength, shout in triumph to the God of Jacob. Raise a song and sound the timbrel, the sweet sounding harp and the lute. Blow the trumpet at the new moon, when the moon is full, on our feast. and the main celebrant at the altar for the liturgy of the Eucharist is 
Cardinal Angelo de Donatis, the Cardinal Vicar of Rome. Pregate, fratelli e sorelle, perché il mio e vostro sacrificio sia gradito a Dio, Padre Onnipotente. La potenza di questo sacrificio, Signore, may the, may the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, mercifully wipe away what is old in us and increase in us grace of salvation and newness of life through Christ our Lord. Il Signore sia con voi. In alto i nostri cuori. Rendiamo grazie al Signore nostro Dio. È cosa buona e giusta. È veramente cosa buona e giusta. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. A te, Signore Padre Santo, Dio Onnipotente ed Eterno. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant, and by your wondrous design were pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the Church. For Christ not only adorns with the royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the paschal banquet, and to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments. Donando la vita per te, e per la salvezza dei fratelli si conformino all'immagine di Cristo. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim.
and the first Eucharistic prayer, also known as the Roman Canon, is to be used today. Noi te lo offriamo anzitutto per la tua Chiesa Santa Cattolica, perché tu le dia pace, la protegga, la raduni e la governi su tutta la terra, in unione con il tuo servo, il nostro Papa Francesco, e con tutti quelli che custodiscono la fede cattolica trasmessa dagli Apostoli. Ricordati, Signore, dei tuoi fedeli. Ricordati di tutti coloro che sono qui riuniti, dei quali conosci la fede e la devozione. Per loro ti offriamo, e anche se ti offrono questo sacrificio di lode, e innalzano la preghiera a te, Dio eterno, vivo e vero, per ottenere a sé e ai loro cari redenzione, sicurezza di vita e salute. In comunione con tutta la Chiesa, ricordiamo e veneriamo anzitutto la gloriosa e sempre Vergine Maria, Madre del nostro Dio e Signore Gesù Cristo, San Giuseppe suo Sposo, i tuoi santi Apostoli e Martiri, Pietro e Paolo, Andrea, Giacomo, Giovanni, Tommaso, Giacomo, Filippo, Bartolomeo, Matteo, Simone e Tadeo, Lino, Cleto, Clemente, Sisto, Cornelio e Cipriano, Lorenzo, Crisogono, Giovanni e Paolo, Cosma e Damiano, e tutti i santi, per i loro meriti e le loro preghiere, donaci sempre aiuto e protezione. Accetta con benevolenza, o oh Signore, questa offerta che ti presentiamo, noi tuoi ministri e tutta la tua famiglia. Disponi nella tua pace i nostri giorni, salvaci dalla dannazione eterna e accoglici nel gregge dei tuoi eletti. Santifica, o oh Dio, questa offerta con la potenza della tua benedizione e degnati di accettarla a nostro favore in sacrificio spirituale perfetto, perché diventi per noi il corpo e il sangue del tuo amatissimo Figlio, il Signore nostro Gesù Cristo. La vigilia della sua passione, Egli prese il pane nelle sue mani sante e venerabili, e alzando gli occhi al cielo, a te, Dio, Padre suo onnipotente, rese grazie con la preghiera di benedizione, spezzò il pane, lo diede ai suoi discepoli e disse, «Prendete e mangiatene tutti, questo è il mio corpo offerto in sacrificio per voi». Allo stesso modo, dopo aver cenato, prese nelle sue mani sante e venerabili questo glorioso calice, ti rese grazie con la preghiera di benedizione, lo diede ai suoi discepoli e disse, «Prendete e bevetene tutti, questo è il calice del mio sangue» per la nuova ed eterna alleanza, versato per voi e per tutti in remissione dei peccati. Fate questo in memoria di me. Mistero della fede, annunciamo la tua morte, Signore, proclamiamo la tua risurrezione e la presa della tua perduta. In 
questo sacrificio, o Padre, noi Tuoi ministri e il Tuo popolo santo celebriamo il memoriale della Beata Passione, della risurrezione dai morti e della gloriosa ascensione al cielo del Cristo Tuo Figlio e nostro Signore. E offriamo alla Tua Maestà Divina, tra i doni che ci hai dato, la vittima pura, santa e immacolata, pane santo della vita eterna, calice dell'eterna salvezza. Volgi sulla nostra offerta il Tuo sguardo sereno e benigno, come hai voluto accettare i doni di Abele, il giusto, il sacrificio di Abramo, nostro padre nella fede, e l'oblazione pura e santa di Melchisedec, tuo sommo sacerdote. Ti supplichiamo, Dio Onnipotente, fa che questa offerta, per le mani del tuo Angelo Santo, sia portata sull'altare del cielo, davanti alla tua Maestà Divina, perché su tutti noi che partecipiamo di questo altare, comunicando al Santo Mistero del corpo e sangue del Tuo Figlio, scenda la pienezza di ogni grazia e benedizione del Cielo. Ricordati, o oh Signore, dei Tuoi fedeli che ci hanno preceduto con il segno della fede e dormono il sonno della pace. Dona loro, o oh Signore, e a tutti quelli che riposano in Cristo, la beatitudine, la luce e la pace. Anche a noi, Tuoi ministri peccatori, ma fiduciosi nella Tua infinita misericordia, concedi, o oh Signore, di aver parte alla comunità dei Tuoi santi apostoli e martiri. Giovanni, Stefano, Mattia, Barnaba, Ignazio, Alessandro, Marcellino, Pietro, Felicita, Perpetua, Agata, Lucia, Agnese, Cecilia, Anastasia e tutti i tuoi santi. Ammettici a godere della loro sorte beata non per i nostri meriti, ma per la ricchezza del tuo perdono. Per Cristo, Signore nostro, tuo Dio crei e santifichi sempre, fai vivere, benedici e doni al mondo ogni bene. Per Cristo, con Cristo ed in Cristo, a te Dio Padre Onnipotente, nell'unità dello Spirito Santo, Ogni onore e gloria per tutti i secoli dei secoli. We now pray together the Our Father, which will be sung in Latin.
liberaci, o oh Signore, da tutti i mali. Concedi la pace ai nostri giorni e con l'aiuto della Tua misericordia vivremo sempre liberi dal peccato e sicuri da ogni turbamento, nell'attesa che si compia la beata speranza e venga il nostro Salvatore Gesù Cristo. Signore Gesù Cristo, che hai detto ai Tuoi Apostoli, vi lascio la pace, vi do la mia pace, non guardare i nostri peccati, ma alla fede della Tua Chiesa, e donale unità e pace secondo la Tua volontà, Tu che vivi e regni nei secoli dei secoli. Amen. La pace del Signore sia sempre con voi. E con il Tuo Spirito. Scambiatevi il dono della pace. Ecco l'agnello di Dio, ecco colui che toglie i peccati del mondo, beati gli invitati alla cena dell'agnello. whilst the bishops, priests, and the faithful now receive Holy Communion, our Lord Jesus Christ, present fully body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Sacred Eucharist. We hear the choir singing the Communion Antiphon from the second chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel. Your love is for justice your hatred for evil. Therefore God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above other kings.
during the Holy Father's homily, he made reference to a book called The Second Calling by Father René Volomé, a French priest, a theologian, and the founder of the Little Brothers of Jesus, which he founded in 1933. His spirituality is inspired by the life and writings of Saint Charles de Foucault and the Holy Father spoke about this book during a meeting with parish priests on in February 2018 and in his homily the Holy Father added these words there is a, another piece of writing that I would like everyone to read the second calling by Father René Volomé. It would be nice to offer this in some way to priests. It makes a beautiful exegesis of Peter's vocation, the last one in Tiberius. The Peter of the second call. Just as the Lord called us the first time, he calls us again and again, but strongly the first time, and then he accompanies us by calling us every day. But at a certain point in life, this becomes a second strong call. It is a time of many temptations. It is a time when a necessary transformation is needed. You cannot continue without this necessary transformation, because if you continue like this without maturing, without taking a step forward in the crisis, you will end up badly. You will end up in the double life, perhaps, or leaving everything. You need this necessary transformation.
during this Mass, as we have seen, as well as the blessing of the oils. The priests from the Diocese of Rome have also renewed their priestly vows, which they made on the day of their ordination. And in the letter to the Hebrews, we read about the great, the eternal High Priest, our Lord Jesus Christ. The writer says, Since in Jesus, the Son of God, we have the Supreme High Priest who has gone through to the highest heaven, we must never let go of the faith that we have professed. For it is not as if we had a, a High Priest who was incapable of feeling our weaknesses with us, but we have one who has been tempted in every way that we are, though he is without sin. Let us be confident then, in approaching the throne of grace, that we shall have mercy from him and find grace when we are in need of help. Every high priest has been taken out of mankind and is appointed to act for men in their relations with God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins, and so he can sympathise with those who are ignorant or uncertain, because he too lives in the limitation of weakness. Preghiamo. Concede Dio onnipotente we beseech you, Almighty God, that those you renew by your sacraments may merit to become the pleasing fragrance of Christ, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. And we now come to receive the Holy Father's apostolic blessing. Signore sia con voi. Sia benedetto il nome del Signore. Nostro aiuto è nel nome del Signore. Vi benedica Dio Onnipotente, Padre, Figlio e Spirito Santo. Dear brothers, we have blessed the chrism, the oil of the catechumens, and of the sick. They are now entrusted to you, bishops and priests, so that divine grace, the bearer of strength and life, may flow in souls through your ministry. Take care to respect, honor, and protect these oils, signs of God's grace. May those persons, places, and things marked by them be resplendent with the holiness of God. Che saranno da essi segnati possano risplendere nella stessa santità di Dio.
the end of this Holy Mass, which we has just concluded with the Marian Antiphon. The choir once more sing the Antiphon. O Redeemer, hear the anthem which your people gathered sing. And the procession makes its way from the main altar. The servers followed by the deacons who are carrying the three sacred oils. Which are now to be sent out to the parishes in the Diocese of Rome. And from now the procession will be followed by the cardinals and the deacons, the priests and bishops. And the scholar will continue to sing the antiphon during the procession. This ends the live commentary from the Christmas presided over by Pope Francis from St. Peter's Basilica. Please visit the Vatican News web portal, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and YouTube accounts for coverage of today's Mass, as well as other Vatican and world news. We will be back again live tomorrow afternoon, Friday the 7th of April, from St. Peter's Basilica for the celebration of the Lord's Passion on Good Friday. That liturgy will take place around 5 p.m. Rome time and will continue the sacred Paschal Tridium, which will see lots of activities by the Holy Father at the Masses and liturgies. He will be presiding again over the sacred Paschal, vid uh, the Easter Vigil during the Holy Night from around 7.30 p.m. Rome time on Saturday evening. And then on Easter morning, around 10 o'clock Rome time, the Holy Father will preside over the Resurrection of the Lord, the Holy Mass on Easter Sunday from 10 p.m. 10 a.m. sorry, Rome time, before giving his Easter Obi et Orbi blessing. On behalf of Vatican Media, I would like to thank all of the technicians who made this possible and to all of you joining us, especially through Catholic TV, Catholic Faith Network, Shalom World Television Networks USA, Radio Maria England, EWTN TV, Shalom TV India, Ugandan Catholic Television, Sultan Light TV, Sunday Shalom, Atmodarshan TV, Luminous Radio, as well as all of the channels through the worldwide telecast and through the Vatican News online, YouTube, Facebook and other accounts associated with Vatican Media. From wherever you are joining us, have a good Monday Thursday still. Praised be Jesus Christ. Laudato Jesus Christus.